and welcome to Organized-ish. My name is Leela and I am in my favorite room of the house. This is my craft room and I finally got it organized and situated the way that's going to work best for me after uh, I think like two years of arranging and rearranging. And today I want to give you a full tour of the bulk of where all the organization happens and that is in this dream box behind me. So this cabinet is made by Create Room and it basically is like a transformer of a piece of furniture. So you see it open behind me right now and all of the doors can close up into a big nice looking cabinet. But when it's open like it is right now, you have access to so much of your craft supplies. So today I'm going to give you a full tour, show you everything that's in every single container, how I organized it, how I labeled it, how I decorated it, and then at the end, stick around because I'm gonna give you my full honest review on whether this pricey piece of furniture is worth it. We're going to kick off this tour starting on the far side of my dream box and we're just going to work our way over to the other side. So we're going to start with the right side door first. The way I have my dream box organized is on one side it is my regular vinyl and then on this side that I'm about to show you is all of my iron on vinyl and scrapbook paper and it also has other accessories like paint and pens and markers. I like to keep all of my paint bottles in the door. That way I can see everything. I can tell when I'm getting low and everything is just really accessible. I don't have to open up a drawer to get all these out. I can just pull off the little front guard and then just take out whatever paint I need and I can put it back easily. Now you don't have to use these little guard things on the side, but they are really helpful if you open and close your doors often because it keeps the things from falling out. Since I never really close my doors, I've really been considering just taking these off. The next section in this door holds all of my Cricut Joy iron on, and I don't usually have a lot of this, and so it fits perfectly in this space. Usually if I'm doing an iron-on project, it's typically the bigger size of vinyl and it's almost always black and so I keep a black roll on the door rod since it's my most frequently used color. The next section down are the new smart iron-on sizes. These are a little too big for the containers inside my dream box and so I keep them in the door. Plus they just look really pretty and they're easy to grab without having to go through a big stack. Now let's move over to the next side of the door and this is where all the containers live. Create Room calls these totes and these medium sized totes are really good for holding small things like stamps and clay and then you'll see on the top shelf I have Ziploc bags because I use these to organize all the time and then some random embellishments over here that just don't really fit in any other category. Then we'll move down to where all of the paper and iron-on vinyl are stored. These organizers are from Stampin' Storage and I had them before I got my dream box, but Create Room does actually sell one that matches the dream box. I just didn't really want to rebuy something that I already had. So now below where the paper is, these are the large size totes. And on this side, I have all the different types of Cricut supplies. Like you see here, the wood and the leather and the felt and all of the different accessories that I can use with my Maker 3. I love that you can fit a full size 12 by 12 sheet of scrapbook paper or this felt inside these containers. Like these are the rolls that you buy from Cricut, not the smart kind, but just the regular vinyl rolls. These are the regular rolls and they fit in here perfectly. So you can have all of your Cricut vinyl or any vinyl just lined up exactly the way you need it. You can also fit scrapbook paper. All of this is 12 by 12 cardstock and they fit inside these totes. So I'm able to get to everything. I can take these off of the dream box and put them right on my work table and I can get any colors that I need without having to sit here and try to sort through it all. 
The large size totes are definitely my favorite size that you get. Moving over to the next part of the dream box door is the little narrow section. And these hold these tiny, tiny little narrow containers. You can see that I have them labeled on the side instead of the front. And I just feel like having them labeled on the front was just kind of cluttered. And so by having the labels on the side of the door, I can still see what the labels are, but it's not like right in your face sticking out in the very front of the dream box. These narrow containers are really helpful for all of the teeny tiny little things like these paintbrushes and pens and markers and craft sticks, basically anything that would be really small and need separate little dividers. So these do come with dividers and slots so you can truly customize each one of these narrow totes to completely suit your needs. Now let's move over to the middle of the dream box. Underneath the table, you get these shelves and you can store different things under there. Since it's kind of hard to get to, I like to keep my older Cricut machines under here that I don't use as often. And I don't really have anywhere else to keep them in my craft room. So now we're going to look at the middle section top part area, and these are more of the large totes. Now you can customize this top part a lot of different ways. You can add shelves and put in the medium sized totes. You can use the shelves just to hold different things like binders and notebooks, or paper organizers. You can really put whatever you want and arrange the shelves however you want to in here. And you can also buy extra shelves from Create Room. So if you need a little more than what you got and you have a plan on how you want to organize it, you can always add on extra accessories. As you can see, the middle part of my dream box is a lot of different random things. I try to keep both sides mostly Cricut things and the middle is all of the extras. So I have the tools in this tool organizer along with pins and markers. I got both of these tool organizers from Create Room and they fit in that middle section really perfectly. There's only a tiny little gap at the top and that doesn't bother me at all just because I have all of my pins completely separated, all my Cricut tools, everything is accessible and I'm not having to dig through a bunch of different containers or even inside the totes to get to the different pins and markers. I'm actually planning on buying one more of these so I can put down on the bottom section where my Cricut is. On this other side are things like paper punches and stickers and wax melts and different kinds of paper crafting supplies. You've probably noticed by now that I have covered all of my totes with this wallpaper. It's actually removable wallpaper that I got from Spoonflower. When I first got my dream box, I had originally put cardstock covers and then I ended up covering one side of all of those cardstock covers with this patterned wallpaper. And so I can flip it around. So sometimes it can be this pattern and other times it can just be solid paper. But I do have 
have that template on my blog for free and you can download that if you need the template covers for your own dream box. I'll link that page down in the description and I also have a tutorial there that will teach you how to cut these out whether you have a Cricut machine or if you just want to do it by hand. Here on the table is where I keep my Cricut Maker 3. This is the machine that I use most often, so it is always here on this table, and I pretty much keep my table at standing height at all times. I also have this little basket that I use for a trash can, and this is always here on the table as well, just so I can put vinyl scraps inside. Now let's move on to the left side, and this is where I keep my most used items. I am using this side of my dream box every single time that I'm in here, so this side gets a lot of love. This is the Cricut vinyl side, and this is where I keep all of my Cricut supplies and tools and vinyl and joy and transfer tape and everything that goes with all of my Cricut projects lives here. And this is a really great example of why medium totes are awesome because you could see the little dividers inside. I'm able to separate these sections of the medium totes to hold all the different items. Like this one has my label makers. And then in the back, I used a divider to put the actual label tape inside. And then this next one is joy cards. And if you've ever used Cricut joy cards before, you know that they come with the little insert that goes in the front. So there's technically three parts. So I'm able to divide all of the inserts in the front, the cards in the middle, and the envelopes in the back. And they all fit in here so easily. So I can take this whole container upstairs if I want to make cards while watching a movie, or I can just sit it here on the table so I can go through all the different colors when I'm making holiday cards. I actually ended up ordering extra medium totes after I got these, and I have them all over the house in my craft room and even in my garage. Moving down to the next section, this is another one of those paper organizers, and it holds loose 12x12 12 12 vinyl. All of the totes on this side are different kinds of vinyl that I have separated into ultra categories. So there's Cricut Joy and Transfer Tape, Things like outdoor vinyl, floral type vinyl, solids, brights, everything is separated and so easy to find.
In this side of the door, I basically mirrored what I did on the other side, so I keep all of the smart vinyl inside the door. I'm gonna show you here the smart vinyl that just came out when the Maker 3 and Explore 3 came out is just a little bit longer and it doesn't fit inside these containers. So I keep them all inside the door for now. You can also keep these in a separate container, but they do not fit in the dream box as just like inside the totes. On the far end of the door, I have my most used colors of Cricut Joy Vinyl, along with my most used colors of regular vinyl, which are black and white, along with a roll of transfer tape. The cubbies on this side of the door hold all of my Cricut pens and markers, so I have them divided up into three different sections. Also, in this side of the door, well, actually both doors, they come with these hooks, and I took them off the other side. I left them here on this side, but I don't really use them. I tried out the hooks when I first got my dream box, and it just seemed like a lot of wasted space, and so I ended up just taking everything off, and I just didn't use them at all. Create Room doesn't really recommend you put anything on top, but I did just put a few really, really lightweight things. I don't have the crown light, so I think if I had that, I wouldn't actually be able to put anything up there, but I'm not really sure. Here's a little side view of how much space the dream box takes up when it's sticking out on the wall. It really doesn't take up a lot of space when it's open, but it does kind of stick out quite a bit if it's closed. Remember when I said that I never really close up my dream box? This is about as closed as it usually gets. I sometimes will fold in the big sides just so it's a little more compact and all of the clutter inside is hidden. I covered the front of these with that same wallpaper that I used for the drawer fronts and that's just so it looks cohesive. I have that wallpaper on an accent wall in my craft room as well as on the curtains so it ties the whole room together. But you can add on all kinds of different things on these door fronts if you want. Create Room sells some dry erase boards you can put up there. I've seen people use command hooks and hang Cricut mats. You can put any kind of wallpaper. You can leave them blank. You can really do whatever you want with this dream box to make it yours.
Okay, honest review time. So this dream box is not cheap and I will be the first to tell you that it is a pretty pricey piece of furniture. I got a discount from Create Room and I still had to do the pay as you go in order to be able to get this. And I wouldn't normally do something like that, but I needed it for business purposes because I shoot a lot of videos in this craft room and it was a mess. And no matter how much I organized it, it just looked cluttered. So I felt like that was an investment that needed to be made for my business, but I normally don't recommend paying over time for something. I highly recommend just saving up until you're ready to get it and you can pay it all at once. That said, it is definitely 1 million percent worth it to add on the pre-built service. I have seen videos and blog posts of people who were putting together this stream box and it was taking them like an entire weekend or longer and that was with multiple people and one, I don't have time for that and two, I just didn't want to deal with it. So I did pay extra for the pre-built service. It came in three pieces and my mom and my husband and I were able to get those out of the crate and bring them in and attach all the pieces together in just one afternoon. So to me, that was worth the extra money. But if money is an issue and you want to save a little bit, you can totally do the unassembled version and put it together yourself. Another upgrade I got was the shaker doors. And honestly, I kind of regret that because I spent extra money to upgrade from the flat doors to the shaker doors and I keep it closed all the time. No one ever sees the shaker doors. So I think if you plan on closing it up often, an upgrade like that might be worth it. But if you're gonna leave it open all the time like I do, it is not worth the extra money because no one even knows that I have the shaker doors behind here because it's always wide open. So let's talk about the quality of the actual piece of furniture because there's a lot of reviews online that are kind of mixed as far as it being really great quality and not so great quality. So here is my honest opinion of whether it's made well. And I can say yes and no at the same time because when I got it, I was having some trouble with the table and it like would not even stay up. And I had read that that had happened to other people. I reached out to Create Room. They very, very quickly sent me new pieces for the table to hold it in place. And after I got those pieces swapped, I didn't have any trouble with it. So. I can say that the customer service team is very helpful in sending you pieces to replace it. It is just a little frustrating that you spend all this money and you pay for it to be pre-built and you still have to replace some pieces, but that wasn't that big of a deal. The only other thing that I have an issue with mine is there's a gap in the bottom of the door and I've seen a lot of people saying that there's a gap in between on the bottom. I'll put up a picture so you can see. but. I honestly think that mine has a gap because I'm in a basement. This floor is not level. Our house was built in the 70s. This basement is a slab that probably has a huge crack running underneath the floor. I don't know, but I can only imagine how unlevel this floor is. So my dream box, when I try to close it, the doors don't line up right and the door kind of like pops open on one side. And I don't think that that is a manufacturer problem. I think it's a basement unlevel type problem. So I've seen some people that have that gap and I've seen some people that the doors aren't aligned like mine. And I really, really think that the problem is the fact that the floor isn't level. So if I took some time to like put a piece of plywood underneath and level it out. I think that that would solve my problem, but it's really not that big of a deal for me because I leave it open all the time. Now let's go over the container quality. So I have the InView containers and you can get InView or Divi drawers. So I got the InView with my dream box at the time the Divi drawers weren't available yet. And so that was my only option and I love them. They are a pain when you first get them because they're all stuck together in the box and they're so hard to get out of the box. But once you fight with it for a while and you get them all out, these containers are so, so great. They fit scrapbook paper. The medium size bins are great for smaller items. And then the little narrow drawers are so, so helpful for all the little things that you just don't have anywhere to put. I will say that 
I am very, very happy with the InView drawers even more after I got my cubbies. I ended up getting the Divi drawers with the cubbies and I did that for my dollhouse table. I'll put a link up in the top for you to see that project. But the Divi drawers have to be assembled. So with the InViews, you just get the containers. You take them out of the box, you fight with them to get them all separated, and then you slide them right in and that's it. But with the Divi drawers, they have to be fully assembled. So you have to build each individual drawer. So that was fine for my cubbies, but I cannot imagine having to build all of the drawers, all the 80 totes that go inside a dream box. So if, if it were up to me, if you're asking me if it's worth it to buy the Divi drawers when you're getting a dream box, I would say no. I would say go with the InViews just because my Divi drawers were a pain to put together and sometimes they still pop out of place a little bit. So I think the InViews are just a little bit of a leg up. So my overall opinion on the Create Room Dream Box and whether it's worth it, for me personally, I would say yes. 100% so worth it. I just am amazed at how much this holds. Like I had all of my stuff in the floor and I'm looking at it and I'm like, there is no way all of this is gonna fit in the dream box. And it did. And I had extra drawers that I had to find things to fit in it. So if you are a hardcore crafter or a blogger who does a lot of crafts, this is definitely worth it. It's also worth it, in my opinion, if you have a really small space to work with because you can close those doors. So if you live in a small home and you don't have a dedicated craft room, I do think that this is worth your time and money to invest and get set up and organize because you are able to have everything all in one area. You have the table that pops out. You can basically just create this little craft space in any room so like a dining room or a guest bedroom or even the bedroom or even your bedroom because it looks nice when it's closed but I think that if you don't craft a lot or if you don't have a lot of craft supplies it's not really going to be worth it to you and you're probably going to regret your purchase so if you don't have a ton of craft supplies or if you already have some storage and you're just looking for extras, I would look at something like the cubbies from Create Room instead, just because this is a big bulky piece of furniture and a huge investment, and it's not gonna be worth it to you if you don't have enough to fill it up. That's also, from a professional organizer standpoint, it's gonna make you buy more craft supplies to fill in all the drawers that are empty and they're not gonna get used, so you're really just creating extra clutter. So only, only, only consider a dream box if you have enough to fill it and if you use your craft supplies enough to justify buying it. I hope this tour and review was helpful for you and if you are considering getting a dream box, I do have a discount code that the company gave me to share. I'll put that down in the description. And if you have any other questions about the dream box or the cubbies or anything, I don't have the cart or the sew station, so I can't help you with that. But if you have questions about those two, um, drop them in the comments and I will happily answer them if I have the answers. If not, I can direct you to someone who does. Be sure to subscribe to my channel because next week I'm giving you a full tour of my entire craft room, showing you all the spaces that I work and craft and store things and everything in this whole entire area. So you won't want to miss that. I have some really cool storage hacks that you probably haven't even seen on my Instagram. And now that I've gone through all these drawers, all I wanna do is make something. So that's what I'm gonna do now. See ya.